Today, we're gonna to be installing the 034 Motorsport High Pressure Fuel Pump Upgrade Kit into my B9 S4 Audi. Now, if you're wondering what a HPFP or High Pressure Fuel Pump Kit entails, it's essentially an internals upgrade for the high pressure fuel pump that supplies 37% extra fuel, and this is compatible with all your EA 839 engines, such as the S4, the S5, SQ5, RS5, all those B9 2.9 liter, 3.0 liter engines. I believe that's not the entire list, but you can go on 034 site and check that out. And the reason people do this upgrade is because that 37% extra fuel delivery allows you to run bigger turbos, such as the TT710, the TT810, as well as 034's range of plus tunes. Now those plus tunes take advantage of the extra fuel delivery to bump up performance beyond what you can normally do with a stock fuel system and the stock turbo. Now in my case, I'm gonna be installing a new hybrid turbo in my car, and this video is actually kind of the kickoff of that. I'm really focusing on the HPFP today. If you're into modding your S4, and you probably are if you're watching this video, definitely hit that subscribe button because there's gonna be a whole lot more stage three content as we get the turbo fitted to the car, as well as a slew of other goodies. Now let's get started and see what it takes to install this HPFP kit into my S4. The hood's popped open and we're ready to begin. Now, if you're running your engine cover and the heat shield under it, it's time to remove it. The engine cover pulls right up and then the heat shield will have four plastic little screws holding it down. Now we can start removing our high pressure fuel pump. Just to clarify, I've removed my air intake and obviously my turbo. There's gonna be more video about this in the future. This is just focusing on the high pressure fuel pump. The first thing you wanna do is unhook these little buttons and pull this thing out from underneath. We can set that aside and we'll reinstall it later. You can stick the little rag in here, catch some of the fuel that's gonna come out. Using some pliers, we can remove this clamp here. The barb's a little long, so it'll take you a second to get it off. And this will kind of free up our high pressure fuel pump. Now it does say to remove this line too, but I'm using these Oedeker clamps and I don't really feel like busting them off. Let's see if I can pull it out without it. There's a little clip back here. It's a little tough to remove, but use a pick and kind of pick the red piece up. Uh, mine cracked a little bit, but it still retains. Only a tiny bit of it broke off. You just want to be careful. Now, I don't have a real 21 mil wrench, so this isn't the exact right way to do it, but it should work as long as you really tighten things down and you're careful. 17 over here, break it free. It is not a whole lot of torque. There may be fuel here. My car's been sitting for a few days, so I probably don't have a whole lot of fuel. Yeah, there's not much coming out here. In the back, we need a 27 mil wrench, and again, I just don't have those giant wrenches. Something that I guess I've overlooked. Woo. I don't know if there's gonna be fuel in the back of that or what, I assume there is. Huh? Maybe not. Now I use a trim removal tool to get to the back here and pop off the little harness. There we go, very easy. There's a little T30 on the hard lines back here. Now we're gonna use a 14 mil to break loose this hard line right here. It's pretty light. A little fuel in there. Now we're gonna use our old friend, the M10 triple square to bust out the housing. I wanna take a brief second to thank 034 Motorsport for sponsoring this video. As always, you're gonna find links down below in the description to the products, tools, equipment, production gear that was used in the making of this video. The Amazon affiliate links, as always, will help the channel with a small commission if you purchase anything at all on Amazon. Doesn't even have to be the stuff I link to. And of course, I'd love it if you liked, subscribed, rung that bell, and left me a nice comment down below in the description. I love talking to all of you guys. I'm gonna use this tool to remove the locking collar from the housing. There's 
some fuel in here. Now we want to remove this little sleeve from the piston housing and definitely work in a clean environment and don't drop things. These are precision machined. So all these internal pieces are you know, very crucial. Okay guys, I'm using a 19 mil socket on the back of our assembly and a tiny little M4 socket. And I'm pushing just on the piston, not the outer retainer ring. And I'm told if I keep squeezing until we hear that crack. Oh, there we go, the retainer popped out. So I think at this point, if we unscrew, and that's basically what we were trying to do. So there's our high pressure fuel pump box. I'm gonna pop it open, see what we got in here. We've got our new piston. We've got a new hat and retainer. And I think that's it. Nice little packaging from 034. I like it. Now you do want to work on a clean surface and I've, I've swept this up. I love these Tubbo Towel towels. I'm going to link them in the description. They're so good, like amazingly good. Like you're thinking it's some BS but it is genuinely an amazing product. My buddy Sean turned me on to it. You actually might remember Sean from uh, the videos with the E36 M3. Or if you wanna check those out and learn about his M3, I'll link them up here. Now we're ready to press on the new assembly. So first we're gonna remove the old piston from the original assembly. We're going to take our new 034 piston we're gonna fit that into the assembly. And then we're gonna take the new spring, pop the spring over, pop the hat over. Oh, other way around, there we go. And essentially I'm using a 23 mil valve compressor. And you basically wanna watch that the piston is staying centered. Otherwise, if it's going crooked, you're not gonna be able to install. Let's see if we can drop in some of these retainers. Nope, not quite. I mean, that's literally how I'd pull them off a, a valve. Let's see if that'll do. Hey, that might be it. There we go, it's sitting on the piston. Boom, I think we got it, guys. Better look as I unscrew, there we go. We've got our two retainers on there. And this is the whole rig. You see I have it in my vise. I have a 19 mil socket and I have this 23 mil valve seat tool. And that's basically how I did it. You're gonna need to be patient. Install the new 034 sleeve into the bottom of the assembly. And that's gonna go right back in there. But first, take a little motor oil. I'm using my usual oil that I use for the Audi, the Motul uh, Estra Sport 5W40. Um, I've kind of switched to that and then, I don't know, recent times. I might do a little video explaining why. And we can start to thread this in, but obviously we'll need to go finish this in the vise. The 034 instructions don't say there's any specific torque. You know, it was really pretty tight when I took it off, so we're gonna go for pretty tight. I'm hoping that's tight enough. Now we can reinsert the HPFP. Might be a bit of a challenge. Some of these lines like to get in the way. Just do your best to not damage anything. That line is really tight. And then this other little line is pretty okay. It doesn't seem to have too much trouble. Now we can torque these bolts down for the HPFP to 20 plus five uh, Newton meters. I'm gonna go for around 22. Seems like a safe number in case I overshoot. Do the top one a bit. Make sure we kind of snug them both up evenly. Twenty-two point six ought to be all right. And twenty-two point six again. I'm I'm a machine apparently. Now we're going to use a fourteen mil wrench to tighten that hard line right there. It shouldn't require a massive ton of torque. Reattach the big hard line here.
Now we need to reinstall the little T30 into the back of the hard lines here. If you remember, we took off a little push clip back here. We're gonna wiggle it back in place. There we go. Now we can install the pressure sensor fitting. And we're gonna torque this thing kind of back up. I don't know the exact torque spec on this. And now we can reconnect the line. Reclip the little clip down there. Now let's use some pliers to reinstall this line we took off. Maybe a little more. Now we've got to reinstall this little cover. Well, that's it. As soon as I get my turbo in and hook up all the other little piping, we can test it out, make sure it doesn't leak. Now, as you guys just saw, the car did crank over. The HPFP is working. You might have seen a sneak peek of the little turbo in there. But the cool thing is this HPFP seems to be doing what it needs to do. And it's not much louder than the stock. There is a little extra ticking that I can kind of hear. I thought the parts quality was really great. It was machined nicely. 034 does great with these kind of components. I thought the instructions were comprehensive. They didn't leave any major gaps, which is always great to see. Let's talk about the difficulty of the install. Overall, I thought it was a two out of five wrench installation. And that's mainly because the tools aren't particularly exotic, but maybe you don't have everything laying around. Furthermore, it's requiring a bit of attention to detail and kind of making sure you're doing common sense things like when you're torquing stuff down. It's stuff that kind of develops over time as you work on cars and you kind of learn your way around the shop. Now I'm imagining if you're installing an HPFP or thinking about an HPFP, this probably isn't your first mod, so I wouldn't be too scared of doing it. But you know, do consider whether or not you have all the tools, you wanna to make the investment in the tools, or whether you might just take it to a shop that's gonna be able to do the job for you. The biggest tips I would give is to definitely take your time, make sure you don't mangle any of the fuel lines, just, you know, be careful about not bending them too much. It could be a little bit of a pain to move that bigger line out of the way to get the HPFP out. You definitely wanna remove it kinda of straight, you don't wanna be like angling it and mangling anything. And then on reinstallation, it's the same thing. You wanna put it in there cleanly. And you also wanna pay attention when you're torquing this thing down. The instructions from 034 don't really call this out, but if you look in the factory manual, it does suggest kind of snugging everything up by hand until the, the HPFP is kind of in its place and then torquing kind of in stages so that you get even distribution of pressure so that you avoid warping or damaging anything as you torque down. Very common on engine components. It's something you see pretty frequently. One of those common sense things I alluded to that if you don't work a lot on cars, it might not occur to you. Overall, I think this is a fun project. If you're into modding your car yourself, this isn't very hard. You could totally do it, just take your time. And I'm very happy with the results so far. Definitely recommend this product. Now do be on the lookout, there are gonna be more stage three videos coming out as I mentioned, so I will catch you again really soon.